a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in Exploring ETFs. Hi everyone, welcome to Exploring ETFs. I'm Nina Mishra, and today we are talking about semiconductor ETFs. Semiconductor stocks and ETFs have seen a lot of interest from investors in the month of November. There's a lot going on and investors are wondering whether the worst is over for these stocks and ETFs. So we decided let's take a look at these stocks and ETFs. So chips are the basic building blocks of computing. So they are used in everything from smartphones to cars, PCs, video games, data centers. And because the pandemic had supercharged the demand for computing, chip stocks had surged and they were among the hottest sub industries within technology in 2021. Now this year they had they have plunged from their pandemic highs and the main reason is uh, these concerns about global economic slowdown then rising input cost and uh, also continued COVID lockdowns in China tensions between China and Taiwan, and we will talk about Taiwan Semiconductor in a little bit. And also there were some restrictions imposed by the Biden administration on export of advanced chips to China. So all these reasons uh, impacted chip stocks. This month they have rebounded because inflation reports were cooler than expected. And then Warren Buffett, uh, the legendary investor who can be called the best investor of all times or one of the best, <clears throat> if not the best, uh, it was revealed that his Berkshire Hathaway invested about $5 billion in the Taiwanese chip maker. Taiwan Semiconductor. So that uh, also sent chip stocks soaring. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the chip stocks which have driven the performance uh, this month. So I mentioned TSMC. Uh, this is the most important semiconductor company in the world, I would say. And many investors do not know about it. Uh, it is based in Taiwan, uh, of course. So this uh, accounts for about 55% of global foundry or fab market. And uh, companies like Apple, Nvidia, AMD, they all design their chips and then they outsource their manufacturing to their manufacturing to TSMC. It uh, manufactures the cutting edge, most advanced chips in the world. Uh, so apart from uh, Buffett's investment, uh, the company had earlier announced that its uh, October sales were up 56% year over year. So that also sent the stock soaring. So the stock is still down a lot uh, uh, year to date, and that's mainly because of rising tensions between China and Taiwan, and there were concerns that China may try to invade Taiwan. So some of those concerns were alleviated after a meeting between Presidents Biden and President Xi of China. And uh, the company is also trying to diversify some of its geopolitical risks by building factories outside of Taiwan in US and in Japan. Uh, and uh, the, then I wanted to talk a little bit about ASML. This is also a very important chip company, and this is actually the best performing stock, chip stock year to date and over the past month. This Dutch company manufacturer manufactures extreme ultraviolet lithography or EUV machines. And these machines use light to print patterns on silicon wafer at municipal minuscule scale. So these are very sophisticated machines that are critical to production of cutting edge microchips, uh, which are used in 5G cellular equipments, computers for AI smartphones, data centers, and ASML sells these uh, machines to world's leading chip manufacturers, including Taiwan, Intel, Samsung. So very important chip stock. 
Now, this uh, company announced recently earlier this month, and they projected their annual capital expenditure by 2025. Uh, they revised by 50% from the target that they had given a year ago. So that sent the stock soaring. Now, NVIDIA and AMD, very important US uh, chip companies, they have also done pretty well uh, this month. And uh, in fact, uh, NVIDIA, both these companies had reported results uh, recently. AMD, uh, AMD's results were better than expected because the company expanded into servers. Uh, just so it was able to outperform despite a very weak PC environment. NVIDIA had actually missed revenue estimates, but they beat the earnings estimates and uh, their data center business was uh, quite strong. So that also helped the stock. Now we will take a look at three popular semiconductor ETFs, which are uh, different from one another. So let's go to the code pages on sax.com to take a look at these ETFs. So the first one I'm highlighting is the most popular chip ETF. It is by Venek. The ticker symbol is SMH. It tracks a market cap weighted index of 25 chip companies, has an expense ratio of 35 basis points, and has more than 7 billion in assets. To learn more about this ETF, you can use the link on our code page. And before that, you can also read the research report and our articles. Then Going to the Venec web page, you can look at the holdings and wait. This is pretty top heavy. Taiwan Semi is the top holding, then NVIDIA and ASML. We talked about these uh, stocks, these companies. So these three account for more than 25% of the portfolio and will be determining, determining the performance of this ETF to a great extent. The second one that I'm highlighting is by iShares. Uh, the ticker symbol is SOXX. This is also very popular with about 6.5 billion in assets and has, a, has an expense ratio of 40 basis points. It tracks a modified market cap weighted index of 30 US listed chip companies. By modified weighting, I mean they are certain caps on individual holdings, so this is not as top heavy as SMH. To learn more, again, you can go to the code page on zax.com and using the link, you can go to the iShares web page for this ETF and you will see that Texas Instrument, Broadcom, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm, then AMD, these are the top holdings in this ETF. Uh, this also holds ASML and uh, TSMC, but they come much later. So a different uh, kind of uh, holdings weighting scheme. Uh, and it is not as top heavy as uh, SMH. Uh, one thing I wanted to add that Invesco launched a cheaper version, not a not a cheaper version, a cheaper ETF which tracks an index which is very similar to SOXX's uh, with the same kind, almost the same kind of weighting. And that uh, ETF, SOXQ, uh, currently has about 75 million in assets, little smaller, uh, and it charges 19 basis points. So take a look at that ETF too. Uh, the third one that I'm highlighting is uh, follows a totally different weighting scheme, XSD by State Street, Spider S&P Semiconductor ETF. This is equal weighted, so not top heavy at all. If you are worried about performance of the heavyweights and you want more exposure to smaller stocks, then you can look at the CTF 38 holdings. 35 basis points expense ratio has 1.1 billion in assets. And again, you can use uh, the link to go to State Street web page and you will see that all chip companies, including small, mid-size, they have almost equal weights at the time of rebalancing. They are all brought to equal weighting. On the next slide, I have the competitive performance versus S&P 500 index, and I have also included the 
NASDAQ 100 index because chip stocks are uh, a subcomponent of technology. So you will see that year to date, all these uh, ETFs had a terrible performance. Uh, they underperformed the S&P 500 index and also the QQQs uh, slightly. The, and then on the next slide, I have the performance over the past month and you will see that all these have surged compared to the S&P and also the Nasdaq uh, and uh, these are now up between 20 to 22 percent over the past month. On this slide I have included the comparative performance of these stocks that we discussed because this is pretty interesting. So ASML is, has surged about 40% over the past month. The other three stocks have also done very well, much better than the broader indexes, uh, NVIDIA, ASML, and, uh, and uh, AMD, sorry, NVIDIA, TSM, and AMD, they are up uh, around 28 to 30% over the past month. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out zax.com slash promo for an interesting offer. And also make sure to subscribe to all our videos, uh, our video channels so that you do not miss anything. And I will see you next week.